parties say they're for financial reform. And yet, if Republicans get their way, a vote just to begin debate on the bill could very well fail. Oh, I think tomorrow they vote against this bill as it uh, stands, and, and, and I'd hope a lot of Democrats would. Republicans accuse Democrats of trying to rush them as they negotiate changes to the sweeping new rules. Democrats say their opponents are simply stalling. Eighteen months ago, people broke into our home, stole everything in our house, uh, and we haven't even changed the locks on the place yet. Behind closed doors, leaders from both sides are hashing out their differences over a new consumer protection agency, which Republicans think would create too much bureaucracy, and strict new rules governing the trading of derivatives, those financial instruments at the heart of the Goldman Sachs fraud case. The concern with regulating derivatives too strenuously is that it can stifle the risk-taking that some people say is at the heart of American economic activity. Senior White House it, economic it, it, it advisor Larry Summers told Face the Nation's Bob Congress, Schieffer today uh, that he believes the legislation, yeah, as written, could have prevented the financial meltdown. So. There wouldn't have been unregulated subprime mortgages that predated on people and set off a housing bubble. There would have been a procedure for resolving institutions like Lehman Brothers that got in trouble without big taxpayer bailouts. The two sides insist they are inches, not miles apart, and that it's less a matter of if financial reform will pass than when. Russ? Nancy Cortez on Capitol Hill, where it's going to get busy. Thank you very much, Nancy. Also this week, a Senate subcommittee is due to hear testimony from Goldman Sachs CEO Lloyd Blankfein and other executives. In a 2007 email released yesterday, Blankfein said the firm lost money on mortgages, but then, quote, made more than we lost by betting against the housing market. And for more on this, we are joined by writer Michael Lewis, financial journalist and most recently author of the book, The Big Short, Inside the Doomsday Machine. Michael, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. But my pleasure. Let's begin with these emails that were released over the weekend that show that folks at Goldman Sachs either knew or strongly suspected that some of the products they were selling were going to fail, yet would make the company and them money later on. These days, how common a practice is that on Wall Street? Uh, in, uh, in March of 2007, when this, when this deal would have been put together, I would have thought it was, it was very common. Goldman Sachs boss Lloyd Blankfein is speaking before Congress on Tuesday. It's not his first time to that party, but how nasty do you think that's going to get? Very. <laughs> very. I mean, I think that, uh, I, that, uh, that for the first time, the SEC, with this lawsuit against Goldman, has shined a light into the heart of Goldman's business. And clearly, they were operating in a pretty poisonous spirit. Whether, I don't know whether what they did was illegal, but it should be. I mean, they were, they, were, they, were, they were helping to design essentially pollution to release into the financial system, securities that were almost certain to go bad, and that did go bad within six months of having created them. In your mind, just how damaged is Goldman Sachs right now? Badly. Um, I don't think they know how badly damaged they are. Uh, in, some, in some ways, unfairly, because I don't think they were doing anything that a lot of other people uh, weren't I, on Wall Street. I don't think it puts the firm necessarily at risk, though I'd be, I would not be shocked if it results in the firm maybe splitting itself up and part of it going private in the end. I think it puts the jobs of the people at the top of the firm at risk, though. Hmm. I don't think they know that yet, but I think it does. Hmm. Writer Michael Lewis, thank you so much for your insight. Really appreciate it. Sure. Thanks for having me.